Okie dokie, video time. This video is actually a review of the JXD S7800. This is actually a review unit that was kindly sent to me by said company. And it's taken me a while to get the time to actually sit down and do a review of it. But I've had the device long enough, played around with it long enough, and let's get into it. So first, let's look at the box itself. Uh, the box, wow, <laughs> uh, from the box alone, it would kind of make you want to buy it. I mean, that guy's coming right out of the screen. It, it, boo, you get the gun. No, you don't actually get the free gun with the console. So what do we got on the side here? Quad-core processor, Android 4.2, which is actually, no, it's up to 4.4 right now. I don't know if it's going to get updated in the future, but whatever. 7-inch screen, touch, dual cameras, dual joysticks, Wi-Fi, emulators, mm, I'm touching that. Button mapping, and free game center. Okay, that looks like the uh, mobile me icon, like before iCloud, but in orange instead of blue. Hmm, whatever, my memory could be serving me wrong. So let's look at the specs. No, let's look at the specs in English. There we go. Yep, 7-inch screen, 5 point little... Yeah, the camera, 2 megapixel rear camera, 0.3 megapixel front camera. I don't know, I mean, if you're going to bother to put a camera on it, I don't know. It, it, in my opinion, if it's not going to be that good, don't even bother. I'm thinking like the first generation iPads. Um, color black. Okay. I don't think they had any other colors. It's got a bunch of different connections. It's got USB. It's got HDMI out, which is very, very nice. 16 gigabyte model. So let's see what they give you inside the box. Here's the inside of the box. This is like a weird foam thing. No console, because I already took that out. In here, we have, well, normally the charger would be in here, but I'll touch on the charger later. A pair of earbuds, which I didn't even open, not because the usual, oh, generic, cheap, whatever, so-and-so. Um, I was looking at the specs on here. The frequency response is between 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? I haven't opened them yet. It's on video. Let's see what they look like. Oh. Oh, the wire is so thin. These are such a thin plastic. Oh, no uh, ear cushions? No, no. Oh, these are these are big too. Hold on, let me try to put these in my ears. They don't even stay. Wait, hold on. And I, I have pretty big ears too. Okay, me with the big ears I have, these don't even stay. Okay, yep. All right. Well, at least I got to open those. Bubble wrap. They give you free bubble wrap. USB cable, it's USB micro, which is nice, so you probably have some of those cables laying around already. And the user's manual. And we'll take a quick look through the user manual here. Doo, doo, doo. Let's see what this Android gaming console can give us. Thank you for purchasing JXD product. This menu menu this is a manual this menu includes very important security arrangement and information about the product for better using and enjoying it we highly recommend you to read the following information before starting to use it um yeah like i usually do if you want to pause and read that in detail that's up to you but i'm not going to go all out into it it basically talks about the key mapping which is very similar to the nvidia shield and tablet where you can assign touchscreen commands to certain physical hardware buttons and yeah, that's my cat. And I think, yep, it talks about managing your applications. Yeah, if you've used Android before, it's all the same. You know how to do that. So we'll just yeah, push that back there and look at the device itself. So the device itself, let me double check something here, make sure I'm not logged into anything. Okay, cool. Oh, I better up the brightness, otherwise, you're not going to see anything. There we go. Okay. So here's the console itself, and yeah, I am filming this on April Fool's Day, it's kind of funny. Oh, Tweeter Man actually posted the video. Uh, yeah. So, it's fairly hefty, I wouldn't say it's heavy, it's, I mean, I 
it feels like it weighs less than the first generation iPad, but then again, it's got actual physical buttons on it, which is always a welcome feature in my eyes. So we've got a control pad, dual analog sticks, which are kind of odd because they don't... Uh, the surface of the bottom of the joystick doesn't go down all the way, so when you tilt it, you get to... It's exposing it to dust and whatever. I think that's, I don't know, a little off-putting. There's your front-facing camera. Home button, game, uh, key mapping settings. Back button, menu button, start button, select button, face button, second joystick, and dual shoulder buttons. And I did mention how I was going to talk about the charging port before. It's a little odd because the charging port, it has a proprietary charger... Think of, I haven't really seen one like this since the Motorola Zoom tablet back in 2011, where it's its own separate charging port there, and then there's your micro USB, the micro USB there, headphones, HDMI mini output, which is nice, you know, like I have the NVIDIA Shield portable, the first NVIDIA Shield, and I really do like the HDMI out feature, and it's more or less, it's pretty much the same on this console here, and the back side... You got Andy there, I think. Yeah, it says official name, Andy. Rear-facing camera and stuff on the bottom there. So, like we said, like we discovered, it does run Android. And one thing I want to check here, let's see. Yep, it is. Sorry, I didn't want my Gmail to come up or anything. It is running Android 4.4.4. And it does have a system update function. And it always says there's no update available. What I always find kind of interesting is this particular build of Android seems to always be looking for a wireless network and not Wi-Fi. I mean cellular like 3G or LTE, something like that. And I always put it in airplane mode minus the Wi-Fi just to save on battery because it seems to always be looking for a wireless signal that's not there and from what I understand could never be there. I mean... There's no, it's a micro SD card slot, there's no SIM card tray on here of any kind, so I'm not really sure what's going on with the hardware, It's or maybe it's software based, it's looking for hardware that's not even there, who knows. So anyway, yeah, HDMI, you could toggle the HDMI settings here, I'm trying not to get my ugly mug in the shot for all of your sake. You could set the resolution, how much it zooms in, you could adjust settings for the screenshots, and... Oh, sorry, okay. So this is how it looked when it arrived to me. This is how the home screen was arranged. Uh, this icon right here, Game Center, when I opened it, it installed this APK file called Happy Chick which seems to be a proprietary app store of sorts, which I can't really navigate because the majority of it is in Chinese. So there's that. There's this test app function, which I'm pretty sure that icon was ripped right from Dropbox. If I remember right... Yeah, it's... This is really odd. It's like there's this directory of APK files built into this console, and I could just touch these icons and... It, it works just like that. These applications are installed, like the MX Video Player, Line, WhatsApp, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was a paid app, so that might be kind of naughty. Uh, Facebook, I'm sorry I'm not logging into Facebook on that APK file, because that's probably sketch. Going back to Sonic 2, what's interesting is I did install Sonic 2 using that Happy Chick app, and it shows this splash screen first. Okay, that's <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to show this splash screen and <laughs> and then boot into the rest of the Sonic game. Okay, I'm assuming if I, for whatever reason, why I have to. I bet if I clear the app data, that'll fix. But that I've never had that happen before. So that's cool. Came with this game called Wild Blood. And my brother-in-law played it a lot. And it had pretty good graphics. He said it was a fun game. Um, video, I'm assuming that's just another file browser of sorts here. Um, yeah, there's Happy Chick again. A lot of the emulators aren't really preloaded on there. Every time I load up Emulator Store, nothing loads, it just never loads. So you, 
if you didn't want to get them through the Play Store for whatever reason, you have to get them through Happy Chick. And again, they're in Chinese. So let's look at the rest of the icons here. Service for service for um, hold on, service frown. Yeah, I clicked on that maybe once or twice, and it brings me to some kind of forum for JXD, which is an old uh, MyBB forum kind of format. Uh, most of the postings are from spam bots pushing Viagra, so that's a thing. Camera, Chrome, key mapping, gallery, music, sound record, explorer, settings. I'm not going to bore you with that because you're probably aware already of what they do. I'm also not really going to bore you with showing off the emulators like I have an NES emulator on here. and I had a Motorola Droid from 2009 which played NES and SNES games just fine, which this does as well. It's a very good emulation machine. Um... Processor's really well for it. I'm sorry, was that English? Anywho, it's built really well for emulators. The buttons are actually quite responsive. The control pad is above decent. It's a little spongy, but it is responsive, even with the diagonals. The joysticks are... they kind of feel like... Um, I'm trying to think of a good comparison. They feel like a mini joystick... Uh, Mini DualShock 2 joystick. So, yeah, they're really nice. The face buttons, again, are a little spongy, but they're responsive. They do what they need to do. Shoulder buttons, it is a large console. Luckily, I do have large hands, so they're pretty accessible. Uh, the inner and outer shoulder buttons. And it works quite nice. So, yeah, the emulators in general, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance... They work as well as any Android device that's come out within the last five years. Nintendo 64 is where it kind of hits the fan, as, again, about 50% of Android devices do. Launch titles work fairly well, like Pilot Wings, Mario 64. They're playable, but once you get to maybe something that's released later down the line, like <laughs> Banjo-Tooie or Perfect Dark, it's not even going to load at all. But that's to be said for all, almost all Android devices, and again, I'm not going to bore you with like, oh, here's Mario Brothers 3 on here, here's how Zelda is, because I want to focus more on the device itself. Take my word for it, it is a very good emulation device, but what I really wanted to do was really push it to the limit with current generation games. For one thing, I downloaded The Walking Dead Season 1 by Telltale Games, because I downloaded this on my NVIDIA Shield console, and it played well, don't get me wrong, it had a good frame rate, but there were a couple of times when uh, if there was enough stuff going on on screen, the frames would drop, uh, not significantly, but enough where you would notice it and kind of cringe and be like, ugh, like, that's gross. But I played it for a little bit, and from what I remember when I was playing it on the shield, it actually works very well on here. This handles it quite well. Okay, I'm pretty sure I saved it after this, but whatever. Yep, that's right. Pause brings... We have the good people at home waiting. Don't keep them waiting. Touch, 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 touch. Do something. I just want some polygons to show up on the screen to prove my point. The cat's in the background, and I'm staring at him. He's being goofy. Okay. So, yeah, there's some polygons. And yeah, I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not high resolution, this game. I mean, the Sega Dreamcast can probably handle this game. But as far as I got, until I saved it, at least I thought I saved it, it worked really well. And it doesn't really cut out. The console keeps up with the game. Unfortunately, this isn't really a high motion scene, so it's not really proving my point. So I'll go to another game that will possibly prove my point. Perhaps a little bit further. Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which... Really? You? Again, played well on my shield. Didn't really have any issues with it. Go punch some people. You're a, a man. I'm, I'm going to punch you to show my anger. Yeah. Excuse me, bad boy! Oh, don't you talk to me like that, girl. Oh, there we go. Take a hike now, mister. 
I'm gonna take your car. You have a nice car. There we go. So yeah. Oh, I hit a cop. That's not good. That, no, no, I didn't. I didn't do it. This car was mine the whole time. I swear. He stole it from me, and that was a, a light. Okay. No. Yeah, where's that cop? I'm gonna show him. Yeah. I'm gonna show his cop. Oh, there goes the hood of my car. See you later. Ugh, dang flats. I'm sliding all over the place. This guy's got a lame car. I mean, my car is lame. The one I didn't steal. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to go too far into it. What you said. So, to wrap it up, um... It's really an overall very good, almost excellent, emulation console. Um, I'm not sure if this stuff like Happy Chicken Service Forum or From is on here for everybody that would buy this, but it was for me, so it might have been used by someone else at some point. The battery life on it is... Uh, I mean, for a portable console, Thinking of it in that aspect strictly alone, it's not very good. It's about four hours. I tested that by playing a game on a loop for, well, about four hours. But I had the screen about half brightness. Volume was very, very low, almost muted. And it lasted four hours before. <laughs> so, yeah. The one thing I fear most about these consoles like this, where they're not openly adapted and bought and supported, is that... Games and emulators and apps may work on it now, but what I fear the most is as these apps get updated or if new games or whatever come out, they might not necessarily work with this because it does have a system update function, but who's to say it will get supported down the road? So it's a thing that kind of scares me, kind of puts me off like, mm, I don't know. So there's that. But as it stands right now, the fact that the price point of this, you can get it for, depending on where you look, under $200 is actually very good. Uh, the NVIDIA Shield Portable, the original one, I think is going for around $200 now. That does get openly updated and does have access to stuff like the Shield Hub. But this does have a larger screen. Um, some may think the controls are better because... I'm sorry, I, I got off put by him there. Um, not everyone liked with the shield how all the weight was really in the bottom of the console, so having the screen up just kind of made the weight go like this. I, I don't even know if I'm explaining it right. So it's really up to you. Out of the box, the way it is right now, this is honestly a very good emulation and video game playing device. If it's still that way in, say, a year, year and a half as more updates and apps come out, I don't know. I can't promise that. But if you want something Android-powered that can play games on the very cheap, I, <laughs> I would definitely suggest this. This is honestly pretty good. So, um, yeah, that's my... Um... Hold on a sec. Just watch him here. He's... Don't worry, I'm going to take that from him, I promise. He didn't take it with it. Thank you. Where was I? I don't remember. It's good. If you want to buy one, I would recommend it. There, there's your ending.